Have you ever looked up at the stars and wondered if we are truly alone in the universe? It's a profound question that stirs the imagination and makes us question what we know about our own history. Today, we're diving deep into ancient Mesopotamia to explore the intriguing theory of the Anunnaki. Found in Sumerian texts, the Anunnaki were described as celestial beings that descended from the heavens. But could they have been more than just myth? And what if I told you this ancient tale has echoes in other cultures around the world, posing the possibility of a common narrative of extraterrestrial contact? In the heartland of Mesopotamia, one of the cradles of human civilization, the Sumerians etched a compelling narrative into clay tablets. They spoke of beings known as the Anunnaki, divine entities who descended from the heavens. These celestial figures were not mere flights of fantasy but were perceived as genuine influences in the Sumerian society. In the Sumerian cosmology, the Anunnaki were believed to be the offspring of An, the sky god, and Ki, the earth goddess. And among these divine figures, some, like Enki, Enlil, and Inanna, held significant roles in Sumerian myths and epics. They were seen as divine mediators, connecting the celestial realm with the earthly domain and playing a part in the creation and early development of humanity. The Sumerian texts describe Eridu as the first city established by the Anunnaki on Earth. Interestingly, Eridu is considered one of the oldest cities in the world, and it's in this ancient city that the concept of urbanization, written language and state rule first began to emerge. The Anunnaki were often associated with bestowing wisdom and knowledge upon humanity. They're said to have taught humans the arts of civilization, like law, agriculture, architecture and writing. Catalyzing the societal shift from hunter-gatherers to settled agricultural communities. Now the crux of the issue remains. Are these accounts of the Anunnaki mythological constructs created to provide explanations for natural phenomena or historical events? Or could they be interpreted as early human interactions with beings from another world, documented through the only means available at that time, myths and legends? The ripples of the Anunnaki influence, it seems, extend well beyond the boundaries of Suma. Whether it's under different names, titles or representations, ancient cultures around the globe have distinct tales of divine beings descending from the skies to interact with humanity. Let's turn our gaze across various cultures and decipher these intriguing narratives. In ancient Egypt, for instance, the pantheon of gods was believed to have descended from the heavens to guide human society. Their god of wisdom, Thoth, similar to the Anunnaki, was said to have introduced writing, mathematics and architecture to humanity. Intriguingly, the Sumerians' neighbor, the Akkadians, had their equivalent of the Anunnaki called the Igorge. Even halfway across the world in Mesoamerica, the Maya believed in the Kukulkan or Feathered Serpent, a deity that bestowed knowledge and wisdom. He was known as Quetzalcoatl among the Aztecs. Meanwhile, the ancient Indian texts, the Vedas, tell of the divas, divine beings who interacted with humans and even interbred with them, a narrative strikingly similar to the Anunnaki's role in Sumerian texts. In Greek mythology, the gods resided atop Mount Olympus but frequently descended to Earth to interact and sometimes mate with humans, leading to the birth of demigods and heroes. Again, this resonates with the Sumerian account of the Anunnaki breeding with humans to create demigods. These parallels in disparate cultures across various geographical boundaries pose a bewildering question. Are these uncanny resemblances mere coincidences? sprung from the shared human impulse to personify and deify natural phenomena and existential quandaries? Or do they point towards a common thread, an ancient global influence by sky beings weaving through the tapestry of human civilization? As we dig deeper, we tread along the precipice of the known and the unknown, venturing into realms that blur the boundaries between mythology, archaeology and even, perhaps, extraterrestrial encounters. This tantalizing and universally resounding theme of celestial beings lending a hand in the development of human civilization is truly compelling. From the celestial dragons of Chinese lore, the Norse gods of Asgard, to the divine pantheon of the Roman Empire, stories of mighty beings from the stars are deeply entrenched in our collective consciousness. So why is it that across wide oceans, over towering mountains, through vast deserts and deep in lush rainforests, the tale of star beings visiting Earth helping humans or sometimes wreaking havoc, finds its way into the oral and written traditions of civilizations. 
One explanation proposes that these myths are archetypal, that is, they represent universal symbols or motifs embedded deep within our collective unconscious, as Carl Jung might argue. They are part of our human heritage, a product of the shared fears, desires and the innate curiosity about our place in the universe that is common to all human societies. Another explanation draws on the theories of Swiss author Erich von Däniken, who argues that these stories are not merely symbolic but literal descriptions of encounters with extraterrestrial beings. He contends that these celestial beings were, in fact, technologically advanced aliens who were mistaken for gods by our less advanced ancestors. Moreover, this global myth of celestial beings suggests a diffusion of cultural elements between ancient societies. This could mean that either these stories were so universally relevant that they spontaneously arose in each culture, or that ancient civilizations were much more globally connected than we give them credit for, sharing stories and myths across vast distances. Yet another perspective comes from the field of astroarchaeology, which suggests that these stories might represent early humans' attempts to understand and document astronomical phenomena. The celestial beings may be personifications of planets, stars, and celestial events like comets or meteor showers. However, the line of thought that we're most interested in aligns with the Sumerian text's narrative, that these beings were advanced entities who directly intervened in human society, teaching us agriculture, architecture, writing, and social organization. As we delve further into this topic, we'll encounter theories both intriguing and controversial. Each viewpoint offers a different lens to view these ancient narratives that have shaped our world and continue to puzzle and fascinate us to this day. The question is, which lens brings the truth into the sharpest focus? And are we prepared for what we might see? With such fascinating theories and tantalizing connections, one might be tempted to jump headfirst into believing these stories. However, as any good investigation goes, we need to approach this from a scientific perspective, scrutinizing the evidence, evaluating its validity, and understanding its context. Firstly, let's consider the Sumerian texts themselves. The clay tablets on which these stories were written were inscribed with cuneiform script, one of the earliest known forms of writing. Translating these is a complex task, often open to interpretation, so it's entirely possible that descriptions of the Anunnaki and their actions may not be entirely accurate. For instance, Zechariah Sitchin, a popular author known for his translations of these texts, proposed that the Anunnaki were extraterrestrials who came from a planet called Nibiru. Other scholars, however, have contested his interpretations, suggesting he read too literally into metaphors and symbolism in the text. In the realm of archaeology, physical evidence can also be ambiguous. While we find inexplicable feats of engineering in ancient structures and iconography that seems to depict otherworldly beings, these can also be explained by human innovation and the power of human imagination. Some proponents of the ancient astronaut theory point to technological achievements of ancient civilizations as evidence of extraterrestrial intervention. They argue that the construction of the pyramids of Giza or the Nazca lines in Peru would have required knowledge and technology beyond the capabilities of the people of the time. However, many archaeologists dispute this view, asserting that these feats are testament to human ingenuity rather than alien assistance. Turning to the global similarities in myths, these can be explained by the shared human experiences and archetypal narratives. While it's intriguing to think that similar stories of celestial beings across cultures point to a common historical event, it's also possible that these myths arose from shared human fears, desires, and attempts to understand the natural world. If we pause for a moment and put the skepticism aside, what could this Anunnaki influence really mean? Starting with the texts, the Sumerians described the Anunnaki as deities who descended from the heavens. They were seen as bringers of civilization, teaching humanity various aspects of culture like law, agriculture, architecture, and even the mysterious art of divination. If we consider this from an ancient astronaut perspective, this could be interpreted as these beings sharing advanced knowledge and technologies. This perspective gains even more weight when we consider how quickly civilization seemed to have sprung up in Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization. The region saw an almost abrupt transformation from a hunter-gatherer society to one that built cities, developed agriculture, and invented writing. Could this sudden leap have been aided by extraterrestrial influence? Moving to the global scale, if the Anunnaki did influence other cultures, we might need to rethink the concept of independent innovation. 
Currently, historians believe that many cultures developed similar technologies and beliefs independently, a phenomenon called parallel evolution. But if the Anunnaki theory holds true, it suggests a more interconnected ancient world than we currently believe. To take an example, let's consider the pyramids. Pyramidal structures appear not only in Egypt, but also in cultures as far removed as the Mayans in Central America. If we were guided by extraterrestrials in our distant past, it certainly poses intriguing questions about our origins and our place in the universe. Are we truly alone, or have we been part of a galactic community since the dawn of civilization? And as always, thanks for watching. We have taken a journey through ancient texts, explored cultures from around the globe, and tried to decode the influence of the Anunnaki. While the theory of extraterrestrial intervention in our past remains a topic of speculation and debate, it prompts us to keep an open mind, to question the accepted narratives, and to continue our quest for knowledge. As we ponder the mysteries of our past, we may just find clues that could reshape our understanding of our place in the universe. But as we continue our search for answers, remember, it's not just about reaching the destination, but also about the thrill of the journey itself. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and as always, uh, the idea that the Anunnaki might have had a global influence isn't a novel concept, but exploring its potential breadth and depth is an enthralling journey. As we traverse ancient civilizations and their achievements, it's hard to ignore certain patterns and parallels that seemingly hint at a unifying factor. Could it be that this ancient extraterrestrial race, known in Mesopotamian myths as powerful deities, shared their knowledge across vast stretches of land and time? When we observe ancient structures from the ziggurats of Mesopotamia to the pyramids of Egypt and even the distant steppe temples of the Mayans, a structural similarity emerges. These colossal structures, often aligned with celestial bodies and events, demand a level of architectural and astronomical expertise that seems ahead of its time. The question then arises, is it mere coincidence or a shared blueprint from a singular advanced source? This theme of advanced knowledge isn't confined to architecture. Ancient cultures from the Sumerians to the Vedic Indians possess scriptures detailing complex astronomical data. They charted the movement of stars, understood the concept of planets and even hinted at a heliocentric system. Were these independent discoveries? Or was there a teacher, perhaps the Anunnaki, guiding them to these revelations? Mythologies further fuel this speculation. Various cultures describe divine or otherworldly beings who descended from the skies. In South America, the legends talk of gods arriving from the stars and teaching them advanced agricultural methods. Similarly, in Africa, the Dogon tribe's knowledge of the Sirius star system, particularly of the dwarf star invisible to the naked eye, baffles scientists today. Were these mere tales or encoded accounts of actual encounters with beings from beyond our world? Artifacts and symbols also suggest a global link. The ubiquitous dragon, revered from China to Europe while diverse in interpretation, holds common themes of power, divinity, and often association with the sky or cosmos. Were these depictions inspired by the Anunnaki or their technologies, interpreted by our ancestors as magical or divine? While these patterns and similarities across ancient cultures are striking, they also open a Pandora's box of questions. Were our ancestors merely drawing from a shared well of human imagination, coming up with parallel innovations and myths? Or do these patterns suggest that an external, perhaps extraterrestrial influence, specifically the Anunnaki, bridged these cultures and eras, sowing seeds of knowledge that blossomed into the marvels we study and admire today? The Indus Valley, nestled between modern-day Pakistan and India, was home to one of the most enigmatic ancient civilizations. Flourishing around 3300-1300 BCE, the Indus Valley Civilization, or Harappan Civilization, named after Harappa, one of its primary cities, showcased a level of urban sophistication and organization that rivals its contemporaries in Egypt and Mesopotamia. Astonishingly, within the ruins of the Indus Valley, archaeologists have unearthed symbols and artifacts that bear uncanny resemblances to the Anunnaki iconography of ancient Sumer. While it's crucial to approach such comparisons with caution, the potential implications of these findings are hard to ignore. City layouts of the major Indus centers, such as Mohenjo-daro and Harappa, display meticulous planning. Wide, straight streets form a grid pattern, 
with advanced sewage and drainage systems unseen in other parts of the ancient world. At the heart of Mohenjo-daro stands the Great Bath, a central public structure possibly used for ceremonial purposes. Surrounding it are symbols etched into stone and metal, symbols resembling the winged sun disk, a staple of Anunnaki representation. Moreover, countless small soapstone seals have been found throughout the Indus Valley sites. These seals, mostly square or rectangular, depict various animals, figures and symbols. Among these symbols, certain motifs echo the iconography associated with the Anunnaki, most notably figures standing or seated in postures reminiscent of deities found in Sumerian depictions. While the written script of the Indus Valley remains undeciphered, these symbols offer tantalizing hints. Many researchers have posited a potential cultural or spiritual link between the Harappans and the Sumerians. It's conceivable that they might have shared, borrowed, or even inherited certain aspects of spirituality and mythology, possibly centered around the mysterious Anunnaki. One of the most striking pieces of evidence is a depiction found on a seal where a figure, seated in a yogic posture and surrounded by animals, bears a headpiece strikingly similar to those worn by Sumerian deities. This figure, often called the Pashupati seal, has led many to speculate about a deity or figure that may have been revered in both cultures. Trade is another avenue that might have facilitated this cultural exchange. The Indus Valley people were known traders, their goods reaching far off lands, including Suma. It's entirely possible that during these exchanges, more than just commodities were shared. Stories, myths and religious beliefs could have traveled alongside material goods. While definitive conclusions remain elusive, the parallels between the two civilizations provide a tantalizing puzzle. Did the Indus Valley inhabitants have their own interpretation or version of the Anunnaki? Or are these similarities mere coincidences born from the universal human penchant for creating myths? The sands of time continue to obscure these secrets, but the pursuit of answers persists, reminding us of the interconnected tapestry of ancient human civilizations. The connection between the Anunnaki and ancient Egypt is a topic of fervent debate, exploration and wonder. While Mesopotamia is often cited as the primary region of influence for the Anunnaki according to various theories, their reach possibly extended far beyond, touching the banks of the Nile and influencing the dynasties that rose there. At the heart of ancient Egypt was its pantheon of gods and goddesses, revered and depicted in magnificent temples, hieroglyphs and papyrus scrolls. Names like Osiris, Isis, Ra and Anubis are well known. But some researchers suggest that these deities could share a lineage or be synonymous with the Anunnaki. One of the compelling arguments stems from the intricate and advanced architectural feats of the Egyptians. The pyramids, especially the Great Pyramid of Giza, remain a marvel. Their precise alignments with celestial bodies, intricate internal chambers and sheer grandiosity are sometimes cited as being beyond the capabilities of ancient man without some external guidance. Could it be that the Anunnaki, with their advanced knowledge, had a hand in this? Then there are the similarities in stories and legends. Just as the Anunnaki were believed to have imparted vast knowledge in Mesopotamia, so too were the gods of Egypt considered the source of wisdom, medicine, astronomy and more. The Book of the Dead, a guide to the afterlife for ancient Egyptians, contains spells and instructions that resonate with tales from Sumerian texts. Themes of life, death, resurrection and the stars repeatedly appear in both cultures. However, it's the similarities between the physical depictions of the gods where things become even more intriguing. Both Sumerian and Egyptian art represent their deities as larger than life, often possessing unique crowns or headdresses and holding staffs or scepters of power. Some speculate that these could be more than just symbols, but might represent some form of advanced technology or device. Moreover, the idea of kingship, granted from the heavens, is a common thread. Pharaohs were seen not just as rulers but as gods in human form, a direct bridge between the mortal realm and the divine. This concept aligns with the Sumerian belief of kingship being bestowed by the Anunnaki. However, with these points made, it's essential to tread with caution. Correlation does not necessarily imply causation. While there are parallels, there are also vast differences in the beliefs, practices and histories of the Sumerian and Egyptian civilizations. Many scholars believe that these similarities might be coincidental or stem from the shared human experience rather than direct influence. Situated between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, in what's modern-day Iraq, 
the Sumerians established one of the world's first urban civilizations. Their impact on the course of human history is profound, laying the groundwork for many facets of modern society. In the annals of ancient history, Sumer is often referred to as the cradle of civilization. By 4000 BCE, the Sumerians had already developed systems of writing, advanced architecture, and complex religious beliefs. Their society was a collection of city-states, each governed by its king and protected by its patron god or goddess. Some of the most famous city-states include Ur, Uruk, and Eridu. One of the Sumerians' most celebrated achievements is their system of writing called cuneiform. Etched onto clay tablets, cuneiform symbols allowed them to maintain records, draft laws, and create poetic works of literature. Among these, the Epic of Gilgamesh stands out, an epic poem that predates even Homer's works and delves deep into themes of friendship, ambition, and the human quest for immortality. Religion was central to Sumerian life. They believed in a pantheon of gods and goddesses who controlled every aspect of their world, from the movements of the stars to the fertility of the soil. Temples known as ziggurats towered over their cities. These were not just places of worship, but centers of economic and administrative activity. Economically, the Sumerians were pioneers in trade and agriculture. Their land, often termed the Fertile Crescent, was immensely fruitful, allowing them to cultivate a range of crops. Yet, what truly propelled their economy was their ingenuity. The Sumerians were among the first to use the wheel, not for transportation initially, but for pottery. They also devised systems of weights and measures, facilitating trade within and beyond their borders. But life in Sumer wasn't always peaceful. Conflicts often arose between city-states vying for resources, leading to the establishment of fortified walls and the rise of warrior kings. The ebb and flow of power, as one city rose while another declined, became a hallmark of Sumerian politics. Over time, as with all ancient civilizations, the Sumerians faced decline. They were absorbed or conquered by subsequent empires, including the Akkadians, Babylonians and Assyrians. However, the imprint they left is undeniable. Their innovations in governance, writing, religion and technology set the stage for successive civilizations and in many ways shaped the trajectory of human progress. Zechariah Sitchin, a controversial and influential figure in the realm of ancient astronaut theories, left behind a legacy that continues to captivate and challenge scholars and enthusiasts alike. His interpretations of ancient Sumerian texts and their potential links to extraterrestrial beings, particularly the Anunnaki, have fueled debates and discussions across the world. Born in Azerbaijan and raised in Palestine, Sitchin's multilingual skills played a pivotal role in his explorations. Fluent in modern and ancient languages, he meticulously deciphered ancient cuneiform texts, the wedge-shaped script used by the Sumerians. Through this deep dive, Sitchin proposed some intriguing and groundbreaking ideas. Central to his theories is the belief that the Anunnaki, a pantheon of deities described in ancient Mesopotamian literature, were not mere myths. Instead, he proposed that they were extraterrestrial beings from a planet named Nibiru, which orbits our sun every 3,600 years. According to Sitchin, these beings came to Earth seeking gold, a resource they required to save the deteriorating atmosphere of their home planet. Sitchin's interpretation of the texts paints a vivid picture of these visitors. He describes how the Anunnaki, upon arriving on Earth, genetically modified native hominins to create a labor force, resulting in the emergence of modern humans. This audacious claim suggests that our very evolution might have been influenced or even orchestrated by these celestial beings. But Sitchin didn't stop there. He posited that much of human civilization's early advancements from the birth of agriculture to the establishment of organized societies were guided by the Anunnaki. They played the role of teachers, imparting knowledge that accelerated human progress at an unprecedented rate. Another fascinating angle Sitchin explored was the potential correlations between the Anunnaki tales and stories from other cultures. He drew parallels between Sumerian accounts and those in ancient scriptures like the Hebrew Bible. The story of the Great Flood, for example, appears both in Sumerian texts and in the biblical account of Noah. Was it mere coincidence or evidence of shared experiences with these celestial beings? Though his theories have been met with skepticism from mainstream archaeologists and linguists who often argue that his translations are misinterpretations, there's no denying the influence Sitchin has had. 
His work has spawned a plethora of books, documentaries, and discussions, bridging the gap between ancient legends and the possibility of extraterrestrial encounters. In the end, whether one subscribes to Sitchin's views or dismisses them, his perspective offers an enchanting lens through which to view our ancient past, prompting us to question and explore the boundaries between myth, history, and the vast expanse of the cosmos. What if I told you that the foundations of our civilization, our technologies and our knowledge were the legacy of an ancient race of extraterrestrial beings? Sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, right? But for those who subscribe to the Anunnaki theory, this isn't mere fiction but a plausible explanation of human history. Today, we're embarking on a journey to a hypothetical celestial body, the so-called Planet X or Nibiru. Exploring the mythology surrounding the Anunnaki and their alleged influence on humanity, Planet X, more commonly referred to as Nibiru or the Ninth Planet, is a theoretical planet that's believed by some to exist on the extreme outer edges of our solar system. This concept isn't a new one, in fact it has roots going back to the 19th century when scientists like Percival Lowell postulated the existence of an unseen planet to explain the irregularities in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. However, the discovery of Neptune's moon Triton and further observations led to the dismissal of these theories. Fast forward to the 21st century and the idea of Planet X has been resurrected, not as Nibiru, home to an alien civilization, but as a potential ninth planet in our solar system, a world perhaps 10 times the mass of Earth and as much as 20 times farther from the Sun than Neptune. The proposed existence of this planet. Nine comes from the strange clustering and distinct tilt of a group of high perihelion Sedna-like objects. These are distant minor planets that have orbits taking them hundreds, even thousands of astronomical units from the Sun. Scientists Constantine Batigin and Michael E. Brown at Caltech presented strong evidence of this unseen massive perturba in 2016. They noticed that a group of icy objects beyond Neptune, known as Trans-Neptunian Objects or TNOs, had odd orbits that appeared to be influenced by the gravitational tug of a larger, distant unseen planet. However, despite extensive searches and numerous candidate objects, this ninth planet remains supposedly unconfirmed. Some scientists propose alternative explanations for the TNO's peculiar orbits, such as the collective gravitational influence of a distant disk of icy bodies. Nevertheless, the allure of a hidden world in our own cosmic backyard continues to captivate scientists and lay people alike. The Anunnaki, a term that means those of royal blood, or those who from heaven to earth came, are a group of deities that appear in the mythological traditions of the ancient Sumerians, Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians. According to these ancient Mesopotamian cultures, the Anunnaki were the most powerful deities in the pantheon, descendants of An, the god of the heavens, and their primary function was to decree the fates of humanity. But the story of the Anunnaki takes on a more intriguing form in the hands of Zechariah Sitchin, a controversial author best known for promoting an alternative interpretation of human history. In his Earth Chronicles series, Sitchin proposed that the Anunnaki were not mythological deities, but rather extraterrestrial beings from a planet in our solar system beyond Neptune, the aforementioned planet X or Nibiru. Sitchin's theories, although not supported by mainstream historians or scientists, draw upon his own interpretations of ancient Sumerian texts and the iconography and symbolism of Mesopotamian art. He suggests that the Anunnaki came to Earth around 450,000 years ago in search of minerals, particularly gold, to save their dying planet by using it to repair their damaged atmosphere. Moreover, Sitchin postulates that these ancient astronauts genetically engineered Homo sapiens as a labor force. He credits the Anunnaki with accelerating our evolution and introducing advancements in human civilization, including the concepts of agriculture, law, architecture, and even the fundamentals of astronomy. Interestingly, several ancient cultures indeed have stories about gods descending from the heavens, teaching humanity various aspects of civilization from the fallen angels called the Watchers in the Book of Enoch who shared forbidden knowledge with mankind, to the Vimana riding gods of Hindu mythology, and the feathered serpent deity Quetzalcoatl of the Aztecs who was said to have brought knowledge of agriculture and the calendar system to humans, there are these pervasive narratives of sky gods uplifting mankind. But why would such advanced beings decide to come to Earth of all places? 
As per the theories espoused by Zechariah Sitchin, the answer lies in a metal we're all quite familiar with, gold. Gold has always held a special place in human history, seen as a symbol of wealth, power, and divinity. But for the Anunnaki, it apparently had a far more practical purpose. The idea is that the Anunnaki's home planet, Nibiru, had a severely damaged atmosphere, not unlike the concerns we have about our own ozone layer. The Anunnaki, being an advanced civilization, knew how to mitigate this problem. By suspending gold particles in Nibiru's atmosphere, the gold would act as a shield reflecting harmful radiation back into space and insulating their planet, much like how we use reflective materials to guard against the sun's heat. However, Nibiru's gold resources were dwindling and this is where Earth entered the picture. Our blue planet, according to Sitchin's interpretation of Sumerian texts, was rich in this precious metal, which ultimately led to the Anunnaki's arrival on Earth. It suggested that they established mines, particularly in Africa, where today we find some of the richest gold deposits in the world. It's an intriguing theory, and it mirrors some of our own contemporary interests in space exploration. For instance, today we talk about asteroid mining as a potentially lucrative enterprise because of the rich deposits of precious metals that asteroids contain. So the idea of an advanced civilization scouring the cosmos for resources isn't entirely outlandish. When we think of gold, we often picture it as a symbol of wealth and power, used to create artifacts, adorn temples, or be fashioned into jewelry. But according to the Anunnaki theories, gold was more than just an ornamental or symbolic resource, it was a solution to a planet-wide problem. As we discussed earlier, the Anunnaki's home planet of Nibiru supposedly had a compromised atmosphere. The Anunnaki sought to repair this by using gold, a resource that was apparently scarce on Nibiru, but abundant here on Earth. But why gold, you might ask? Interestingly, gold has a number of properties that make it uniquely suited to such a task. It's highly reflective, able to block heat and light, and it's incredibly resistant to corrosion. In a way, gold could act as an extremely effective insulator if suspended in an atmosphere, reflecting harmful solar radiation back into space while keeping the desirable conditions intact. In fact, we see a bit of a parallel in our own space endeavors. For instance, the visors on astronaut helmets are coated with a thin layer of gold to protect them from the unfiltered sunlight in space. We also use gold in our satellites and spacecraft for similar reasons. So, the idea of using gold in such a manner might not be as far-fetched as it seems. However, while the notion is scientifically plausible, the theory of the Anunnaki using Earth's gold for this purpose remains unsubstantiated. There's no solid archaeological or historical evidence to suggest that ancient extraterrestrials mined Earth for gold. The narrative stems from a certain interpretation of Sumerian texts, which is not universally accepted. The importance of gold to the Anunnaki and the resultant interaction with humans, as per the theory, does paint a fascinating picture of our ancient history. Those who subscribe to the Anunnaki theory believe that these beings had a major role to play in the development of human civilization. Some say that they essentially jump-started our society, providing us with knowledge and tools that greatly accelerated our progress. The Sumerians, one of the earliest civilizations on Earth, are often mentioned in these discussions. They were known for their advances in astronomy, mathematics and law, among other fields. Some argue that these advances were too sophisticated to have developed without outside influence. Hence, they postulate the Anunnaki imparted these advancements upon the Sumerians. An interesting part of this theory includes the origins of written language. Some believe the Anunnaki gifted the Sumerians with cuneiform, one of the earliest known systems of writing. By giving humans the ability to record and pass on knowledge, the Anunnaki allegedly elevated human culture and set us on the path to becoming the technologically advanced civilization we are today. Proponents of the Anunnaki theory often point to depictions in ancient Sumerian art and iconography that seem to show human-like beings of larger stature, sometimes depicted with wings or surrounded by symbols of power and divinity. These, they claim, are the Anunnaki, and their presence in such artwork is further proof of their influence. Believers in the Anunnaki theory often highlight similarities between various ancient cultures as further evidence of extraterrestrial intervention. For instance, the story of a flood and a savior figure who rides it out in a ship, which is seen in both the Sumerian epic of Gilgamesh and the biblical story of Noah, 
is thought to suggest a common origin. Are these independent stories or echoes of an ancient memory shared by all humans? Moreover, across various civilizations, from Sumerians to ancient Egyptians, Mayans, and even Native American tribes, there are references to sky gods or celestial beings who descended from the heavens. Could these be disparate accounts of the same extraterrestrial visitors, the Anunnaki? Then there's the matter of pyramids. These majestic structures were built in different parts of the world by civilizations that supposedly never had contact with each other. The ancient Egyptians, the Mayans and civilizations in ancient China. Each set of pyramids aligns with certain celestial bodies or events. It's an intriguing correlation that prompts the question, was this a coincidence? Or is there something more to it? But as compelling as these parallels may be, they are not universally accepted as evidence of Anunnaki influence. Many scholars attribute these similarities to convergent evolution of civilizations, the idea that different societies independently arrive at similar cultural practices and beliefs. Others theorize about the possibility of ancient cultural exchange that we don't fully understand yet, it's important to keep in mind that just because something isn't fully understood, it doesn't automatically mean that the explanation is extraterrestrial. So are we the descendants of an advanced alien civilization? Or are the Anunnaki tales simply part of our rich tapestry of mythology, the product of imaginative storytelling and our inherent fascination with the unknown? As of now, the lines between fact and fiction remain blurred, but as we continue to explore our universe and uncover the secrets of our past, we might someday stumble upon definitive answers. Until then, let's keep probing, questioning, and marveling at the captivating mysteries of our existence. Imagine we're about to embark on an odyssey across the world and through time, chasing the footprints of celestial beings known as the Anunnaki. From the fertile plains of Sumer, the pyramid-filled horizon of Egypt, the spiritual epics of India, the astronomical marvels of the Mayan civilization to the philosophical minds of ancient Greece, we find their echoes. Each of these remarkable civilizations, despite their geographical distance and chronological separation, shares a common narrative, an interaction with beings from the skies, advanced entities that influence the course of their development. Intriguing, isn't it? So fasten your seatbelts as we journey across the globe and explore the evidence of the Anunnaki influence on these diverse cultures. Time to traverse the ocean and delve into the mysteries of ancient India, an enduring civilization with a treasure trove of rich mythology and advanced understanding of mathematics and astronomy. Much like the civilizations we've explored thus far, ancient India also bears hints of possible extraterrestrial or Anunnaki influence. One of the most striking signs comes from the ancient texts known as the Vedas, written in Sanskrit over 3,000 years ago. These texts contain references to Vimanas, flying chariots or machines capable of traveling in the air, underwater, and even through space. Ye detailed descriptions of these Vimanas in texts like the Vaimanika Shastra bear uncanny resemblances to modern interpretations of advanced aircraft or spaceships. Could these have been the vehicles of the Anunnaki, interpreted through the lens of ancient Indian culture? Interestingly, the Vedas and other ancient Indian texts, like the Puranas and the Mahabharata, also speak of powerful beings called Devas, who descended from the heavens, possessed advanced knowledge and often intermingled with humans. Some researchers suggest a link between the Anunnaki and these Devas, as both are depicted as celestial beings providing knowledge and guidance to mankind. Ancient India also excelled in areas like mathematics, astronomy, architecture, and medicine. The concept of zero, the decimal system, complex algebraic equations, all were understood and used in ancient India. Astronomy-wise, ancient Indians had knowledge of the planets in our solar system, could predict eclipses, and understood the heliocentric model of the solar system. This advanced knowledge is, by some, attributed to the influence of the Anunnaki. Finally, let's consider the architectural marvels of ancient India. Structures like the Brihadeswara Temple, the Konark Sun Temple and the intricate steppe wells of Gujarat all exhibit an understanding of complex geometries, precision and knowledge of materials that were quite advanced for their time. Some researchers posit these too as evidence of extraterrestrial assistance. 
the parallels drawn between ancient India and other civilizations, interaction with potential celestial beings, adds another layer to our discussion on the Anunnaki's possible global influence. Let's take a look into ancient Egypt, a civilization renowned for its grandiose architecture and rich mythology, to unearth potential signs of the Anunnaki. The pyramids of Egypt stand as a wonder for modern researchers. They are feats of engineering and design that remain challenging to replicate, even with our current technology. Is it possible that the advanced knowledge and methods used in their construction were passed down by the Anunnaki? Then there's the Book of the Dead, a funerary text providing detailed descriptions of the afterlife and instructions for the soul's journey there. It includes spells, charms, and formulas for the deceased to use in the afterlife, demonstrating a deep understanding of metaphysical realities beyond the material world. Some proponents of the Anunnaki theory suggest that this spiritual knowledge could be a gift from these advanced beings. The pantheon of Egyptian gods is another area of interest. The gods were seen as immensely powerful beings, capable of human-like emotions and interactions, and they often intervened in human affairs. Many of these gods were depicted with humanoid bodies and animal heads, evoking images of alien beings. One such deity, Thoth, the god of writing and knowledge, is often linked to the Anunnaki due to his role in imparting wisdom to humans. Moreover, the stories of the pharaohs, considered gods incarnate, align with Sumerian beliefs about the kingship being lowered from heaven. The divine right of the pharaohs to rule could be interpreted as a parallel to the Anunnaki's assumed authority over humanity. The advanced civilization of ancient Egypt, with its monumental architecture, intricate belief systems, and knowledge of celestial bodies resonates with the Anunnaki narrative. As with the Sumerians, could the Egyptians have received extraterrestrial guidance leading to their rapid advancements? Let's dive into now the intricate civilization of the Mayans and explore the tantalizing possibility of Anunnaki influence. The Mayan civilization, which flourished in Central America from approximately 2000 BC to the 16th century, left a significant mark on history through their impressive architectural feats, deep understanding of astronomy, and complex calendar systems. Could these achievements have been guided by extraterrestrial beings, perhaps the Anunnaki? The Mayan pyramids, for instance, are some of the most iconic structures from the ancient world. Constructed with a precise understanding of architectural design, geometry, and spatial organization, they evoke an eerie similarity to the pyramids of Egypt, thousands of miles away. Could this be a sign of an Anunnaki blueprint used in multiple ancient civilizations? The Mayans also possessed an astonishing understanding of celestial mechanics. They tracked planetary cycles, accurately predicted solar eclipses, and even recognized the precession of the equinoxes, a slow 26000 year cycle related to Earth's rotation. The Mayan Long Count calendar is famous for its supposed prediction of the end of the world in 2012. This complex calendrical system, together with their astronomical knowledge, suggests a level of sophistication that many theorists argue could be evidence of extraterrestrial guidance. In the realm of mythology, the Mayan god Kukulkan, also known as Quetzalcoatl in the Aztec culture, bears similarities to the Anunnaki. This feathered serpent deity was a bringer of knowledge, teaching the arts of civilization to humanity, mirroring the roles of Enki and Thoth in Sumerian and Egyptian mythology, respectively. Also fascinating are the Mayan artifacts and drawings that suggest contact with extraterrestrial beings. The Mayan ruler Lord Pakal's tomb, for example, contains carvings that some interpret as him operating a kind of spacecraft. Digging deeper into ancient Greece, we find further evidence that correlates with Anunnaki theories. The pantheon of Greek gods renowned for their intervention in human affairs, complex relationships, and feats beyond human understanding could potentially be interpreted as the Anunnaki's presence. Take Prometheus, one of the Titans, as a compelling example. Prometheus was deemed a hero to humanity, stealing fire from the gods and gifting it to humankind. This act of rebellion against his divine peers symbolizes the transfer of advanced knowledge, akin to how the Anunnaki were said to impart advanced technology and wisdom in the Sumerian texts. Moreover, Let's consider the ancient oracle site of Delphi, believed to be the center of the world by the ancient Greeks. There, the high priestess, the Pythia, would enter trances and deliver prophecies, 
Could these trance states have been enabled by Anunnaki technology or knowledge, as some theorists speculate? Also, the legends of Greek demigods, born of a human and a god, echo the tales of the Anunnaki creating a hybrid human race. Figures like Hercules and Perseus, known for their superior strength and abilities, mirror the Sumerian tales of the Anunnaki's influence on humanity's development. As we delve deeper into these ancient Greek stories, we can't ignore the thematic parallels to the Anunnaki narratives. These accounts, rich in symbol and mystery, offer tantalizing possibilities. Is it mere coincidence or could it be evidence of extraterrestrial interactions? In examining these narratives and the uncanny resemblances they share with Anunnaki theories, we add another layer to the complex tapestry of human history and our quest to understand our origins. Let's travel back in time to Mesopotamia, uh, to the heart of Suma, where the earliest recorded mentions of the Anunnaki were found. If we were to stroll down the streets of Suma, we'd find ourselves in one of the world's oldest civilizations, known for inventing the wheel, creating one of the earliest forms of writing and establishing law codes. But amidst all this innovation, what really stands out are their intricate stories of the Anunnaki. The Sumerians believed that these gods descended from the heavens, and the name Anunnaki itself translates to those of royal blood or princely offspring. Their accounts depicted the Anunnaki as being responsible for the creation of mankind and civilization, teaching humans various disciplines like agriculture, law, and even complex architectural techniques. These narratives are carved into cuneiform tablets, some of which include the Epic of Creation, known as the Enuma Elish and the Epic of Gilgamesh. These tablets illustrate the Anunnaki as complex beings, with individual names, personalities, and roles. Among them were key figures like Enki, the god of water and wisdom, and Enlil, the god of air and earth, whose interactions with humans formed the backbone of many Sumerian tales, even more intriguing are the physical depictions of the Anunnaki, often portrayed as humanoid but with wings or halos, indicating their celestial origin. But where things get even more interesting is the technological prowess the Sumerians attributed to the Anunnaki. Not only were these beings described as spacefaring, but the Sumerians also talked about their intricate knowledge of our solar system, mentioning the existence of outer planets long before our modern telescopes confirmed their presence. This raises a tantalizing question. How could an ancient civilization, supposedly without sophisticated technology, possess such astronomical knowledge unless it was imparted to them? This impressive correlation between Sumerian knowledge and the Anunnaki's teachings has led many to theorize that these were not just creative myths, but historical records indicating an advanced, extraterrestrial influence on our earliest civilizations. As we delve deeper into other ancient cultures, we'll find that the Sumerians were not alone in their encounters with celestial beings, adding another layer to this interstellar puzzle. Now that we've toured the globe and discovered how several ancient civilizations may have been influenced by what they perceived as celestial beings, it's time to take a broader look at this global narrative. It's quite striking, isn't it? Thousands of years ago, societies separated by vast oceans with no feasible means of contact all tell stories of celestial beings visiting Earth, sharing knowledge, and helping shape their societies. These stories are ingrained in their architecture, their writings, their art, and their oral traditions. What's more, these beings often share common traits across cultures, such as descending from the sky, possessing advanced knowledge, and intermingling with humans. So, what does this mean? Are these similarities simply a result of human imagination and our inherent fascination with the cosmos, or do they hold traces of a long-gone interaction with extraterrestrial beings, like the Anunnaki? Many researchers believe the latter, citing the astounding complexity of ancient structures, the advancement of certain societies, and the universal telling of similar stories as evidence. They argue that our ancestors were not just creative storytellers, but also the record keepers of a forgotten chapter in human history, a chapter in which humanity was not alone. While skeptics point out that similarities in these narratives can also be explained through Jungian concepts of shared archetypes and collective unconscious, this doesn't fully explain the intricate details and advanced knowledge embedded within these stories. Moreover, the concept of cargo cults in more recent history where isolated tribes perceived technologically advanced visitors as gods and incorporated them into their cultural narratives. 
suggests a potential model for how ancient societies could have interpreted extraterrestrial visitors. Our journey through these civilizations and their narratives highlights the ubiquity of these celestial narratives in human culture. Whether this points to the Anunnaki or merely to our ancestors' shared sense of wonder and their desire to comprehend the cosmos remains an open question and a subject of ongoing debate, further emphasizing the need for continual exploration and open-minded research into our ancient past. I hope you enjoyed our video today. Please let me know any suggestions you guy may have down below. Deep within the annals of ancient history, myths and legends, lie hidden truths, cosmic connections, and wisdom far beyond our understanding. Ever heard of the Anunnaki, the Emerald Tablets, or the Book of Enki? Today, we'll embark on an extraordinary journey, diving into ancient Sumerian texts, exploring uncharted territories, and uncovering secrets concealed by time. Prepare to uncover the sophisticated knowledge transmission systems and the mysterious legacy of an advanced ancient civilization. Are you ready? Well, hold on, because it's about to get mythical. The Emerald Tablets are a series of mystical texts that have captivated scholars, alchemists, and spiritual seekers for centuries. Here, we'll explore the many facets of these tablets. The Emerald Tablets are attributed to Thoth, the ancient Egyptian god of wisdom, who is also identified with Hermes Trismegistus in Greek tradition. These tablets are said to hold the secrets of alchemy, astrology, and the very fabric of reality itself. Comprising 13 parts, the Emerald Tablets reveal esoteric teachings that cover the mysteries of existence, the cycles of life, the unity of all things, and the laws of creation. They contain principles that are foundational to Hermeticism such as, as above, so below. Within the Tablets, there is a focus on the concept of transformation, both spiritually and materially. This includes the idea of transmuting base metals into gold, which is seen as an allegory for personal enlightenment and inner transformation. The teachings within the Emerald Tablets have had a profound impact on Western occultism. They have inspired various mystical traditions, including alchemy, Rosicrucianism, and theosophy. Many famous philosophers, scientists, and alchemists, like Sir Isaac Newton, have studied these texts. Over the centuries, the Emerald Tablets have been translated into various languages, with several different interpretations. These versions often reflect the cultural context and the philosophical beliefs of the translators, leading to diverse and rich readings of the text. While not directly linked, some researchers propose a connection between the wisdom in the Emerald Tablets and the knowledge imparted by the Anunnaki. This theory suggests that the teachings within the tablets may have originated from the same ancient wisdom that the Anunnaki sought to share with humanity. The authenticity and historical accuracy of the Emerald Tablets are subject of debate among scholars and researchers. Some view them as authentic ancient wisdom, while others consider them a later creation. The original text's whereabouts also remain a mystery, adding to the allure and mystique. The Anunnaki, often described in ancient texts and modern interpretations, stand as one of the most enigmatic and influential entities in mythology, particularly in Mesopotamian traditions. The Anunnaki are primarily known from the Sumerian texts, where they were considered a pantheon of deities. They were said to be the children of the sky god Anu and the earth goddess Ki. These deities were credited with various roles in the creation and governance of the earth and were believed to reside in the heavens, often associated with different celestial bodies. Within the pantheon, the Anunnaki were not uniform in power or function. There was a clear hierarchy with deities like Enlil, Enki and Inanna occupying prominent roles. Some were involved in the creation of humanity, while others governed natural phenomena like the wind, water and fertility. Several myths narrate the direct interactions between the Anunnaki and humans. For instance, the Epic of Gilgamesh describes the hero's encounters with these divine beings. These interactions were not always benevolent. They included both guidance and punishment. Some interpretations of the Anunnaki suggest that they possessed advanced technology and knowledge. This includes the ability to travel between their home planet, often identified as Nibiru and Earth. Their technology could be responsible for some unexplained ancient artifacts and architectural marvels. The Anunnaki were not just rulers or creators, they were also considered teachers. Their teachings included laws, wisdom and moral codes that shaped early human civilizations. These laws often served as precursors to later legal systems and ethical philosophies. 
In modern times, the Anunnaki have been subject to various interpretations and theories, including those linking them to extraterrestrial beings. Authors like Zechariah Sitchin have proposed that the Anunnaki were actually advanced aliens who visited Earth. The legacy of the Anunnaki permeates various cultures and has shaped many religious and philosophical systems. Their influence can be traced in Mesopotamian, Akkadian, Assyrian and Babylonian cultures. Even today, the concept of the Anunnaki inspires literature, media and spiritual movements. The Book of Enki is a compelling and intriguing piece of literature that delves into the Sumerian mythos, exploring the life and teachings of one of the key figures in the Anunnaki pantheon, Enki. Let's break down some of the essential aspects of this remarkable text. Enki, also known as Ea in Akkadian mythology, is one of the principal deities of the Sumerian pantheon. He's the god of wisdom, magic, water and creation, playing a vital role in shaping humanity and the earth. The Book of Enki provides unique insights into his character, philosophy and actions. One of the most fascinating aspects of the Book of Enki is its account of the creation of humans. According to this text, Enki played a central role in forming humans from clay, infusing them with divine essence. This act wasn't merely about physical creation but also imparting wisdom and consciousness. The book details Enki's complex relationships with other deities, including his rivalry with his brother Enlii and his role in mediating disputes among the gods. These interactions highlight the dynamics and politics within the Anunnaki pantheon. The book of Enki is not just a narrative, but also a repository of wisdom. Enki's teachings encompass various fields such as science, astronomy, law and ethics. His wisdom was considered a guiding light for rulers and scholars alike. Modern readings of the Book of Enki often explore its allegorical elements. Some researchers and authors view Enki's actions as symbolic representations of human evolution, consciousness and the journey towards enlightenment. Others have drawn parallels between the Book of Enki and other creation myths from different cultures. The authenticity and interpretation of the Book of Enki have been subjects of debate among scholars. While some view it as a genuine ancient text, Others argue that it's a modern interpretation or even fabrication. The book's content also fuels discussions about the possible extraterrestrial origin of the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki and other ancient civilizations were said to have created hidden repositories of wisdom across the world. These repositories were meant to safeguard essential knowledge and were constructed to endure the ravages of time. Some argue that these could include the Emerald Tablets and other ancient texts. One such repository is the legendary Hall of Records, rumored to be located beneath the Sphinx's paws in Egypt. This mythical library is thought to contain the wisdom of the ages, including information about human history, the cosmos and the universal laws of creation. Some believe that the Anunnaki had a hand in crafting these chambers and storing knowledge within them. Throughout history, various sects and societies have assumed the role of guardians and keepers of this ancient knowledge. They were tasked with preserving, interpreting and transmitting these teachings through generations. This included a network of priests, mystics and scholars working in unison to protect this sacred wisdom. The knowledge contained in ancient texts like the Emerald Tablets and the teachings of the Anunnaki has seeped into various aspects of modern intellectual and spiritual thought. Philosophers, scientists, and spiritual leaders have drawn from these reservoirs of wisdom to shape their theories, practices, and beliefs. Various secret societies, such as the Freemasons and the Rosicrucians, have been linked to the preservation and dissemination of this ancient wisdom. These groups often draw upon the symbolism and teachings found in these ancient texts, weaving them into their own rituals, beliefs, and practices. Efforts to uncover these hidden repositories continue today, with archaeologists, historians and researchers seeking to find physical evidence of these ancient libraries and texts. These efforts are often met with controversy, intrigue and sometimes resistance from various authorities. Besides the physical repositories, the ancient wisdom has also been transmitted through spiritual and mystical means. Various traditions such as Kabbalah and Sufism have carried forth these teachings through mystical experiences, meditative practices and spiritual initiations. The transmission of knowledge from ancient civilizations like the Anunnaki and the legacy of texts like the Emerald Tablets provides a fascinating glimpse into human history's intellectual and spiritual journey. 
Whether viewed through a historical, mystical, or metaphorical lens, this continuous thread of wisdom underscores humanity's eternal quest for understanding, connection, and growth. The layers of myth, mystery, and meaning continue to invite exploration and interpretation, linking the past, present, and future in a dance of discovery and enlightenment. And there we have it. A journey across millennia where we've unraveled the intriguing connections between the Anunnaki, the Book of Enki, and the wisdom held within the Emerald Tablets. From cosmic alignments to hidden repositories of ancient knowledge, the legacy of these texts and beings echoes through our present-day understanding of science, philosophy, and spirituality. Perhaps we're still only scratching the surface of what's yet to be discovered, but as always, the thirst for knowledge never ends. So keep exploring, keep questioning, and remember the journey of curiosity is an unending one. And as always, thanks for watching.